Question 1. What are the main responsibilities of a food service manager regarding food safety? A. Creating menus and cooking. B. Overseeing financial management. C. Ensuring food is prepared and served safely. D. Managing marketing strategies. Answer. C. Ensuring food is prepared and served safely. The primary responsibility of a food service manager regarding food safety is to ensure that all food is prepared and served in a manner that upholds safety standards. Question 2. How do foodborne illnesses affect a food service operation? A. They have minimal impact if managed quickly. B. They can lead to negative publicity and legal consequences. C. They only affect the staff and not the operation. D. They improve the operation's immunity. Answer. B. They can lead to negative publicity and legal consequences. Foodborne illnesses can significantly affect a food service operation by damaging its reputation and potentially leading to legal actions against the establishment. Question 3. What are the most common foodborne pathogens and their associated illnesses? A. E. Coli, Salmonella, and Norovirus. B. Vitamin deficiencies and food allergies. C. Spoiled taste and food discoloration. D. Freezer burn and dehydration. Answer. A. E. Coli, Salmonella, and Norovirus. E. Coli, Salmonella, and Norovirus are among the most common foodborne pathogens, each associated with specific illnesses. Question 4. What are the critical symptoms that require food handlers to be excluded from the operation? A. Fatigue and headache. B. Diarrhea, vomiting, and jaundice. C. Sneezing and coughing. D. Hunger and thirst. Answer. B. Diarrhea, vomiting, and jaundice. Food handlers should be excluded from the operation if they exhibit symptoms like diarrhea, vomiting, or jaundice to prevent potential contamination. Question 5. What are the key steps in developing a HACCP plan? A. Identifying critical control points and establishing corrective actions. B. Choosing the right menu and suppliers. C. Focusing on customer service and pricing. D. Planning marketing strategies and promotions. Answer. A. Identifying critical control points and establishing corrective actions. Developing a HACCP plan involves identifying critical control points and establishing corrective actions to mitigate risks. Question 6. How should a food service manager respond to a foodborne illness outbreak? A. Ignore the situation and continue business. B. Document the incident, cooperate with authorities, and take corrective action. C. Offer discounts to affected customers. D. Only inform the internal staff. Answer. B. Document the incident, cooperate with authorities, and take corrective action. In case of a foodborne illness outbreak, the manager should document the incident, cooperate with health authorities, and implement corrective actions. Question 7. What are the major allergens identified by the FDA, and how should they be handled in the kitchen? A. Milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, soybeans, separate preparation areas. B. Only gluten and lactose. Avoid using them. C. Spices and herbs. Label them clearly. D. All fresh fruits and vegetables. Wash thoroughly. Answer. A. Milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, soybeans, separate preparation areas. These are the major allergens identified by the FDA, and they should be handled with care in the kitchen ideally in separate preparation areas to avoid cross-contact. Question 8. How can cross-contamination be prevented during food preparation and storage? A. By cooking all foods at high temperatures. B. Using the same cutting board for all types of food. 
C, using separate equipment and utensils for different types of food. D, storing all food together to save space. Answer, C, using separate equipment and utensils for different types of food. Preventing cross-contamination involves using separate equipment and utensils for different types of food, especially raw and cooked foods. Question 9. What are the minimum internal cooking temperatures for various types of food? A. 145 degree Fahrenheit for all foods. B. 165 degree Fahrenheit for poultry. 155 degree Fahrenheit for ground meats. 145 degree Fahrenheit for steaks. C. 100 degree Fahrenheit for all foods for energy efficiency. D varies based on personal preference. Answer, B, 165 degree Fahrenheit for poultry, 155 degree Fahrenheit for ground meats, 145 degree Fahrenheit for steaks. These are the minimum internal cooking temperatures recommended for different types of food to ensure safety. Question 10. What are the guidelines for thawing frozen food safely? A on the countertop at room temperature, b. in the refrigerator under cold running water or in the microwave, c. in warm water to speed up the process, d. directly on the kitchen floor. Answer, b. in the refrigerator under cold running water or in the microwave. Thawing frozen food in the refrigerator, under cold running water, or in the microwave are safe methods that prevent the growth of harmful bacteria. Question 11. What factors contribute to the rapid growth of microorganisms in food? A. Freezing temperatures and high acidity. B. Time, temperature, oxygen, moisture, and food. C. High heat and dry conditions. D. Preservatives and food coloring. Answer, B, time, temperature, oxygen, moisture, and food. These factors create an environment conducive to the rapid growth of microorganisms in food. Question 12, how should a manager monitor and manage staff hygiene practices? A, through annual reviews only. B, by setting clear hygiene standards and regularly supervising compliance. C, Assuming staff will follow personal hygiene without supervision. D. Focusing on kitchen hygiene and ignoring personal hygiene. Answer. B. By setting clear hygiene standards and regularly supervising compliance. Managers should set clear hygiene standards and actively supervise and enforce compliance among staff. Question 13. What are the correct procedures for cleaning and sanitizing food contact surfaces? A. Rinsing with water only. B. Wiping with a dry cloth. C. Cleaning with detergent, rinsing, and applying a sanitizer. D. Using a single solution for both cleaning and sanitizing. Answer. C. Cleaning with detergent, rinsing, and applying a sanitizer. The correct procedure involves cleaning surfaces with detergent, rinsing them, and then applying a sanitizer. Question 14. How often should thermometers be calibrated and how is it done? A. Once a year using a professional service. B. Daily using the ice point or boiling point method. C. When they appear to be broken. D. D. Calibration is not necessary for modern thermometers. Answer. B. Daily, using the ice point or boiling point method. Thermometers should be calibrated regularly using either the ice point or boiling point method to ensure accuracy. Question 15. What are the guidelines for safe hot and cold holding of food? A. Hot foods above 135 degree Fahrenheit and cold foods below 41 degree Fahrenheit. B. All foods at room temperature for convenience. C. Hot foods above 100 degree Fahrenheit and cold foods below 50 degree Fahrenheit. D. Specific temperatures don't matter as long as food looks and smells good. Answer. A. 
Hot foods above 135 degree Fahrenheit and cold foods below 41 degree Fahrenheit. Safe hot holding requires temperatures above 135 degree Fahrenheit and cold holding requires temperatures below 41 degree Fahrenheit to prevent bacterial growth. Question 16. What are the proper procedures for cooling food safely and rapidly? A. Leaving food out at room temperature. B. Placing hot food directly into the freezer. C. Using shallow pans, ice water baths, or blast chillers. D. Cooling in large, deep containers. Answer. C. Using shallow pans, ice water baths, or blast chillers. These methods allow for rapid and safe cooling of food, minimizing the time food spends in the temperature danger zone. Question 17. What is the importance of time temperature control in preventing foodborne illness? A. It enhances food flavor. B. It is only a suggestion, not a requirement. C. It prevents the growth of harmful microorganisms. D. It only applies to certain types of food. Answer. C. It prevents the growth of harmful microorganisms. Time temperature control is crucial to prevent the growth and survival of harmful microorganisms in food. Question 18. How should a manager handle a food recall in their operation? A. Continue using the recalled product to avoid waste. B. Immediately remove the product and follow the recall instructions. C. Wait for customer complaints before taking action. D. Only inform the staff but continue serving the product. Answer. B. Immediately remove the product and follow the recall instructions. In the event of a food recall, the manager should promptly remove the affected product from use and follow the specific recall instructions to ensure safety. Question 19. What are the best practices for receiving and inspecting food deliveries? A. Accept all deliveries without inspection. B. Check for proper temperature packaging, and expiration dates. C. Only inspect deliveries randomly. D. Rely on the supplier's assurance of quality. Answer. B. Check for proper temperature, packaging, and expiration dates. Best practices include thoroughly inspecting deliveries for temperature compliance, intact packaging, and acceptable expiration dates. Question 20. What is the role of the food safety manager in staff training and education? A. Delegate all training to external sources. B. Provide comprehensive and regular training on food safety practices. C. Offer training only when there are problems. D. Assume staff already know food safety practices. Answer. B. Provide comprehensive and regular training on food safety practices. The food safety manager should ensure staff receive thorough and regular training to maintain high standards of food safety. Question 21. How can a manager ensure that staff are effectively following food safety procedures? A. By assuming they will follow procedures without oversight. B. Regular observation, feedback, and reinforcement of training. C. Only intervening when there is a problem. D. Delegating responsibility to junior staff. Answer. B. Regular observation, feedback, and reinforcement of training. Effective management of staff adherence to food safety procedures involves regular monitoring, providing feedback, and reinforcing training as needed. Question 22. What are the recommended pest control measures in a food service operation? A. Ignoring minor pest issues, B. Regular inspection, exclusion practices, and working with licensed pest control operators, C. Using over the counter pesticides, D. Only addressing pests visible to customers. Answer B. Regular inspection, exclusion practices, and working with licensed pest control operators. These measures are crucial for effective pest control in a food service environment. Question 23. How should a manager address customer complaints about food safety? 
A. Dismiss them as unimportant. B. Address them seriously, investigate, and take corrective actions. C. Only respond to written complaints. D. Blame the customer for the issue. Answer. B. Address them seriously, investigate, and take corrective actions. Properly addressing customer complaints involves taking them seriously, investigating the issue, and implementing corrective actions. Question 24. What are the legal consequences of a foodborne illness outbreak for a food service establishment? A. There are usually no legal consequences. B. Possible lawsuits, fines, and closure. C. A simple warning from health inspectors. D. Mandatory change of menu items. Answer. B. Possible lawsuits, fines, and closure. Foodborne illness outbreaks can lead to serious legal consequences for a food service establishment, including lawsuits, fines, and even closure. Question 25. What are the critical elements of a food safety audit? A. Randomly checking a few items. B. Comprehensive review of food safety practices, documentation, and compliance. C. Focusing only on cooking temperatures. D. Only auditing during health inspections. Answer. B. Comprehensive review of food safety practices, documentation, and compliance. A food safety audit should involve a thorough review of all practices, documentation, and compliance with food safety standards. Question 26. What are the differences between cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting? A. They are all the same. B. Cleaning removes visible dirt, sanitizing reduces pathogens to safe levels, disinfecting kills pathogens. C. Cleaning uses soap, sanitizing uses hot water, disinfecting uses cold water. D. Sanitizing and disinfecting are only for medical facilities. Answer. B. Cleaning removes visible dirt, sanitizing reduces pathogens to safe levels, disinfecting kills pathogens. Understanding the differences is important for effective hygiene management. Question 27. How should a manager properly handle personal health and hygiene among staff? A. Overlook minor health issues. B. Implement and enforce strict personal hygiene policies. C. Only focus on hygiene during inspections. D. Leave it to individual discretion. Answer. B. Implement and enforce strict personal hygiene policies. Proper handling of staff health and hygiene involves setting and enforcing strict policies to maintain food safety. Question 28. What is the significance of the FDA food code for food service operations? A. It's merely a suggestion with no real impact. B. Provides guidelines for food safety practices and is used by local and state authorities. C. Only applies to food manufacturers. D. It's outdated and rarely used. Answer. B. Provides guidelines for food safety practices and is used by local and state authorities. The FDA food code is significant as it guides food safety practices and is often the basis for local and state health regulations. Question 29. How can the risk of physical and chemical contamination in food be minimized? A. By only using organic ingredients. B. Through careful handling, storage, and using proper utensils. C. Physical and chemical contamination is unavoidable. D by focusing only on biological contamination. Answer B, through careful handling, storage, and using proper utensils. Minimizing contamination risks involves careful handling, proper storage, and using the right utensils and equipment. Question 30. What are the necessary steps for effectively managing waste in a food service operation? A, ignoring waste until the end of the day. B, regular removal, using appropriate containers, and maintaining cleanliness. C. Burning all waste on site. D. Allowing staff to take waste home. Answer. B. 
regular removal, using appropriate containers, and maintaining cleanliness. Effective waste management involves regular removal, using the right containers, and keeping the area clean. Question 31. How should a food service operation prepare for a health inspection? A. By temporarily improving practices before the inspection. B. Regular self-inspections and maintaining food safety standards. C. Closing the operation during inspections. D. Bribing the health inspector. Answer. B. Regular self-inspections and maintaining food safety standards. Preparation involves ongoing adherence to food safety standards and conducting self-inspections to identify and correct issues. Question 32. What is the importance of maintaining proper documentation and records in food safety management? A. Documentation is not necessary if the food looks safe. B. It helps track compliance, identify trends, and is essential during inspections. C. It's only for large operations. D. Digital records have made documentation obsolete. Answer. B. It helps track compliance, identify trends, and is essential during inspections. Keeping proper records is crucial for tracking compliance, spotting trends, and providing necessary information during inspections. Question 33. How should a food service manager address language and cultural barriers in training staff? A. By using only English for simplicity. B. Providing training materials and communication in multiple languages. C. Ignoring these barriers as irrelevant. D. Expecting staff to learn the language independently. Answer. B. Providing training materials and communication in multiple languages. Addressing language and cultural barriers involves offering materials and communication in multiple languages to ensure understanding. Question 34. What are the guidelines for using gloves correctly in food handling? A. Reusing gloves for different tasks. B. Not necessary to use gloves. C. Changing gloves regularly and washing hands between changes. D. Using the same pair of gloves all day for efficiency. Answer. C. Changing gloves regularly and washing hands between changes. Proper glove use in food handling involves regular changes and hand washing between glove changes to prevent contamination. Question 35. What are the best practices for menu design to ensure food safety? A. Designing based on the latest trends. B. Including high-risk items like raw foods. C. Planning a menu that minimizes the time food spends in the temperature danger zone. D using complicated recipes to impress customers. Answer, C. Planning a menu that minimizes the time food spends in the temperature danger zone. Safe menu design involves planning dishes that reduce the risk of time temperature abuse. Question 36. How does the layout and design of a kitchen affect food safety? A. There is no impact on food safety. B. Efficient design reduces contamination risks and improves safety. C. Only modern designs ensure food safety. D. Kitchen design is solely about aesthetics. Answer. B. Efficient design reduces contamination risks and improves safety. A well-designed kitchen layout can significantly reduce the risk of contamination and enhance overall food safety. Question 37. What are the key considerations in emergency response planning for food service operations? A. Planning is not necessary for emergencies. B. Having a clear plan for food safety during power outages, natural disasters, and other emergencies. C. Only focusing on fire emergencies. D. Assuming emergencies will not happen. Answer. B. Having a clear plan for food safety during power outages, natural disasters, and other emergencies. Effective emergency response planning involves preparing for various scenarios that could impact food safety. Question 38. 
How should a manager deal with employees who repeatedly violate food safety practices? A. Ignoring the violations. B. Providing additional training and implementing disciplinary actions if necessary. C. Terminating them immediately without warning. D. Lowering their pay. Answer. B. Providing additional training and implementing disciplinary actions if necessary. Dealing with repeat violations involves retraining and, if necessary, disciplinary measures to ensure compliance. Question 39. What are the critical factors for effective hand washing? A. Using hot water and soap, scrubbing for at least 20 seconds. B. A quick rinse under water. C. Hand washing is not critical if gloves are used. D. Using sanitizer instead of washing. Answer. A. Using hot water and soap, scrubbing for at least 20 seconds. Effective hand washing involves using hot water and soap and scrubbing hands for at least 20 seconds to remove pathogens. Question 40. How should a manager handle situations where food safety practices conflict with customer preferences? A. Always accommodate customer preferences. B. Prioritize food safety over customer preferences. C. Ignore customer preferences entirely. D. Compromise food safety to please customers. Answer. B. Prioritize food safety over customer preferences. In any conflict between food safety and customer preferences, safety should always be the priority to prevent potential health risks. Question 41. What is the impact of high-risk populations on food safety management? A. Special considerations are not necessary. B. Increased focus on time temperature controls and avoiding high-risk foods. C. Only serving cooked foods. D. Reducing the variety of foods offered. Answer. B. Increased focus on time temperature controls and avoiding high-risk foods. High-risk populations require stricter time temperature controls and careful handling of high-risk foods to ensure safety. Question 42. How should allergen cross-contact be managed in a food service environment? A. Ignoring it as allergies are rare. B. Using separate equipment and utensils and thorough cleaning. C. Cooking food at higher temperatures to eliminate allergens. D. Only serving allergen-free foods. Answer. B. Using separate equipment and utensils and thorough cleaning. Managing allergen cross-contact involves using separate equipment and utensils for allergen-contained foods and thorough cleaning to prevent cross-contact. Question 43. What are the proper procedures for storing dry and canned goods? A. In damp areas to maintain freshness. B in a cool, dry, ventilated area, off the floor and away from walls. C. Only in refrigerated storage. D. Alongside chemicals for space efficiency. Answer. B. In a cool, dry, ventilated area, off the floor and away from walls. This method of storage helps prevent contamination and spoilage of dry and canned goods. Question 44. How should a manager address employee illnesses and injuries in the workplace? A. Have them continue working to maintain staff levels. B. Properly document, exclude, or restrict as necessary and follow food safety guidelines. C. Only address serious injuries or illnesses. D. Send them home without documentation. Answer. B. Properly document, exclude, or restrict as necessary, and follow food safety guidelines. Addressing employee health issues involves documentation and appropriate exclusion or restriction based on the illness or injury type. Question 45. What are the key temperature danger zones that must be monitored? A. 0 degree Fahrenheit to 32 degree Fahrenheit and 212 degree Fahrenheit, to 500 degree Fahrenheit. B. 41 degree Fahrenheit to 135 degree Fahrenheit. 
C. 50 degree Fahrenheit to 100 degree Fahrenheit. D. Any temperature above freezing. Answer. B. 41 degree Fahrenheit to 135 degree Fahrenheit. The temperature range of 41 degree Fahrenheit to 135 degree Fahrenheit is known as the danger zone, where pathogens can rapidly grow in food. Question 46. How does AIFO, first in, first out, method contribute to food safety? A. Reduces food cost by using older ingredients first. B. Ensures that the oldest food items are used first, reducing the chance of using spoiled food. C. Is only relevant for inventory management. D. It is a new cooking technique. Answer. B. Ensures that the oldest food items are used first, reducing the chance of using spoiled food. FIFO helps in managing food inventory effectively and safely. Question 47. What are the recommended strategies for effective cleaning and maintenance of equipment? A. Cleaning only when equipment appears dirty. B. Regular cleaning and maintenance schedules and following manufacturer's instructions. C. Outsourcing all equipment maintenance. D. Using any cleaning chemicals available. Answer. B. Regular cleaning and maintenance schedules and following manufacturer's instructions. Regular and proper maintenance ensures equipment is clean and functions correctly, reducing the risk of food contamination. Question 48. How should a manager ensure compliance with local, state, and federal food safety regulations? A. By assuming the staff is already aware of them. B. Regularly updating training and ensuring all practices are in line with the latest regulations. C. Only focusing on federal regulations. D. Compliance is optional. Answer. B. Regularly updating training and ensuring all practices are in line with the latest regulations. Staying informed and compliant with all levels of food safety regulations is crucial for legal operation. Question 49. What is the role of active managerial control in a food service operation? A. Delegating all responsibilities to staff. B. Taking proactive steps to prevent foodborne illness. C. Focusing only on customer service. D. Solely managing financial aspects. Answer. B. Taking proactive steps to prevent foodborne illness. Active managerial control involves taking actions and implementing policies to actively prevent foodborne illnesses. Question 50. How should a manager conduct and document staff performance evaluations in food safety? A. Avoid documenting for legal reasons. B. Periodically, focusing on their adherence to food safety practices. C. Only evaluate new employees. D. Base evaluations solely on customer feedback. Answer. B. Periodically, focusing on their adherence to food safety practices. Regular performance evaluations should focus on how well staff adhere to food safety standards. Question 51. What are the guidelines for safe ice handling and storage? A. Using hands to scoop ice. B. Using clean and dedicated scoops and keeping ice machines sanitized. C. Storing ice next to raw meats for convenience. D. Reusing melted ice. Answer. B. Using clean and dedicated scoops and keeping ice machines sanitized. Proper handling and storage of ice involve using specific scoops and maintaining the cleanliness of ice machines. Question 52. How should ventilation systems be managed in a kitchen to ensure food safety? A. Regular cleaning and maintenance to remove grease and contaminants. B. Only cleaning when visible dirt appears. C. Ventilation is not related to food safety. D. Turning off ventilation systems to save energy. Answer. A. Regular cleaning and maintenance to remove grease and contaminants. 
Properly maintained ventilation systems are key to controlling air quality and removing contaminants. Question 53. What are the principles of effective food safety training programs? A. One-time training upon hiring. B. Ongoing, comprehensive, and understandable for all staff. C. Focusing only on chefs and kitchen staff. D. Limiting training to avoid information overload. Answer. B. Ongoing, comprehensive, and understandable for all staff. Effective training should be continuous, cover all relevant topics, and be understandable for all employees. Question 54. How should a manager ensure the safety of food served to high-risk populations? A. Serve only raw foods. B. Extra precautions with food temperatures and avoiding high-risk foods. C. High-risk populations should not be served. D. There are no special considerations needed. Answer. B. Extra precautions with food temperatures and avoiding high-risk foods. Serving high-risk populations requires heightened attention to food safety, especially with temperature control and avoiding foods that pose higher risks. Question 55. What are the best practices for temperature control during food delivery and catering? A. Guessing the temperature based on experience. B. Using insulated containers and monitoring food temperatures. C. Letting food adjust to ambient temperature. D. Temperature control is not necessary for short distances. Answer. B. Using insulated containers and monitoring food temperatures. Maintaining proper temperature during delivery and catering is crucial and can be achieved with insulated containers and regular temperature checks. Question 56. How should a manager handle conflicts between staff regarding food safety practices? A. Take sides with the most experienced staff member. B. Address conflicts with training and clear communication of standards. C. Ignore conflicts as they resolve themselves. D. Encourage staff to compromise on safety standards. Answer. B. Address conflicts with training and clear communication of standards. Effective resolution involves reinforcing training and clearly communicating food safety standards to all staff. Question 57. What are the guidelines for managing leftovers in a food service operation? A. Reusing leftovers for as long as possible. B. Proper cooling, storage, and reheating to save temperatures. C. Discarding leftovers immediately after service. D. Giving leftovers to staff. Answer. B. Proper cooling, storage, and reheating to safe temperatures. Safe management of leftovers involves appropriate cooling, storage, and reheating procedures. Question 58. How should a manager establish a food safety culture in their establishment? A. By only focusing on food safety during inspections. B. Leading by example, regular training, and encouraging staff participation. C. Assuming the culture will develop naturally. D. Focusing solely on punishment for non-compliance. Answer. B. Leading by example, regular training, and encouraging staff participation. Establishing a food safety culture requires active leadership, continuous training, and engaging staff in food safety practices. Question 59. What are the essential components of a crisis communication plan in case of food safety incidents? A. Waiting for the crisis to pass before communicating. B. Clear communication channels, designated spokesperson, and prepared statements. C. Downplaying the severity of incidents. D. Only communicating internally. Answer. B. Clear communication channels, designated spokesperson, and prepared statements. A good crisis communication plan includes established communication channels, a designated spokesperson, and prepared messages to address the situation effectively. Question 60. How can technology be utilized to enhance food safety in a food service operation? 
A. Technology has no role in food safety. B. Using digital temperature monitoring and food safety management systems. C. Relying solely on technology for food safety. D. Using social media to inform about food safety. Answer. B. Using digital temperature monitoring and food safety management systems. Incorporating technology, such as digital monitoring tools and management systems, can greatly enhance food safety practices. Question 61. What are the guidelines for proper food labeling and date marking? A. Labeling is optional. B. Use any convenient dating system. C. Accurate labeling of ingredients, allergens, and expiration dates. D. Only label food when customers request it. Answer. C. Accurate labeling of ingredients, allergens, and expiration dates. Proper labeling is essential for food safety, ensuring clear identification of ingredients, allergens, and expiration or use by dates. Question 62. How should a manager address unauthorized access to food preparation areas? A. Allow access to anyone interested. B. Restrict access to authorized personnel only. C. Only restrict access during busy hours. D. Access control is unnecessary. Answer. B. Restrict access to authorized personnel only. It's important to control access to food preparation areas to prevent potential contamination and maintain food safety. Question 63. What are the key considerations for safe salad bar operation? A. Offer a limited variety of items. B. Temperature control, protecting food from contamination. C. Salad bars are inherently safe and need no special considerations. D. Use pre-packaged ingredients only. Answer. B. Temperature control, protecting food from contamination. Maintaining appropriate temperatures and protecting food from contamination are crucial for safe salad bar operation. Question 64. How should a manager respond to natural disasters affecting food safety? A. Continue business as usual. B. Assess and address potential food safety impacts immediately. C. Wait for instructions from authorities. D. Focus on profit over safety. Answer. B. Assess and address potential food safety impacts immediately. In the event of a natural disaster, it's important to quickly assess any potential food safety risks and take appropriate actions. Question 65. What are the best practices for hand washing stations in a food service operation? A. Hand washing stations are not necessary. B. Ensure they are conveniently located, properly stocked, and accessible. C. Limit the number of hand washing stations to save space. D. Use hand sanitizers as a substitute for hand washing. Answer. B. Ensure they are conveniently located, properly stocked, and accessible. Effective hand washing stations should be easily accessible, well stocked with soap and paper towels, and located at convenient points. Question 66. How should a manager monitor and manage food temperatures during busy service times? A. Assign dedicated staff for temperature checks. B. Random checks throughout the day. C. Only check at the beginning and end of the day. D. Temperature control is less important during busy times. Answer. A. Assign dedicated staff for temperature checks. Assigning staff members to regularly check food temperatures during busy times ensures ongoing compliance with food safety standards. Question 67. What are the considerations for safe food preparation in outdoor and mobile food service settings? A. No different than indoor settings. B. Focus on convenience over safety. C. Adhering to the same food safety principles as indoor kitchens. D. Use disposable utensils only. Answer. C. Adhering to the same food safety principles as indoor kitchens. 
outdoor and mobile food service operations should follow the same rigorous food safety standards as traditional indoor settings. Question 68. How should a manager handle customer inquiries regarding food ingredients and preparation methods? A. Provide vague or general answers. B. Accurately inform customers about ingredients and preparation methods. C. Discourage such inquiries. D. Redirect customers to the website. Answer. B. Accurately inform customers about ingredients and preparation methods. It's important to provide accurate and clear information to customers regarding food ingredients and how dishes are prepared. Question 69. What are the procedures for safe use and maintenance of cutting boards? A. Use the same board for all types of food. B. Regular cleaning and sanitizing, and using separate boards for different food types. C. Rarely clean to maintain flavor. D. Replace cutting boards annually. Answer. B. Regular cleaning and sanitizing, and using separate boards for different food types. Safe use of cutting boards involves regular cleaning and sanitization, and using different boards for raw meats, vegetables, and ready-to-eat foods to prevent cross-contamination. Question 70. How should a manager address the use of personal devices in the kitchen? A. Encourage constant use for communication. B. Prohibit or restrict the use to prevent contamination. C. No restrictions needed. D. Only allow use during breaks. Answer. B. Prohibit or restrict the use to prevent contamination. Personal devices can be a source of contamination and should be restricted or prohibited in food preparation areas. Question 71. What is the importance of supplier selection and management in food safety? A. Suppliers have no impact on food safety. B. Choose suppliers with good safety records and regularly evaluate their performance. C. Select the cheapest supplier regardless of safety standards. D. Frequently change suppliers for a variety. Answer. B. Choose suppliers with good safety records and regularly evaluate their performance. Selecting and managing suppliers with strong safety records is crucial to ensure the safety of the food received. Question 72. How can a manager effectively manage food safety during peak service times? A. Lower safety standards for faster service. B. Maintain high food safety standards even during busy periods. C. Focus only on customer service. D. Close the kitchen during peak times. Answer. B. Maintain high food safety standards even during busy periods. It's essential to uphold strict food safety standards regardless of how busy the service period is. Question 73. What are the considerations for appropriate food packaging and storage materials? A. Use any available materials. B. Choose materials that are safe and suitable for the specific type of food. C. Reuse packaging materials as much as possible. D. Focus on cost saving over safety. Answer. B. Choose materials that are safe and suitable for the specific type of food. Selecting the right packaging and storage materials is important to maintain food quality and safety. Question 74. How should a manager conduct food safety risk assessments? A. Only when there is an incident. B. Regularly evaluate all processes to identify and mitigate risks. C. Consider it a one-time activity. D. Delegate the task to new staff. Answer. B. Regularly evaluate all processes to identify and mitigate risks. Ongoing risk assessments are vital to identify potential hazards and implement measures to mitigate these risks. Question 75. What are the best practices for maintaining a hygienic environment in dining areas? A. Cleaning only after service hours. B. Regular cleaning and sanitization and immediate addressing of spills. C. Focusing on the kitchen and ignoring the dining area. D allowing customers to clean their own tables. 
Answer B. Regular cleaning and sanitization, and immediate addressing of spills. Maintaining cleanliness in dining areas involves regular and thorough cleaning and prompt attention to spills and messes. Question 76. How should a manager approach continuous improvement in food safety practices? A. Assume current practices are sufficient. B. Regularly review and update practices based on new information and feedback. C. Only make changes when there are problems. D. Change practices annually regardless of need. Answer. B. Regularly review and update practices based on new information and feedback. Continuous improvement in food safety requires keeping up to date with new standards and practices and regularly reviewing and updating current practices based on feedback and new information. Question 77. What are the guidelines for effective communication and signage in a multilingual workplace? A. Use only one language for simplicity. B. Provide multilingual training and signs to ensure understanding. C. Communication in multiple languages is unnecessary. D. Use complex language to convey professionalism. Answer. B. Provide multilingual training and signs to ensure understanding. In a multilingual workplace, it's important to provide training and signage in multiple languages to ensure all staff members understand important food safety practices. Question 78. How can a manager ensure safe food handling during buffet service? A. Let customers serve themselves without any supervision. B. Regularly replace items, use sneeze guards, and monitor temperatures. C. Buffets are inherently unsafe and should be avoided. D. Only offer non-perishable items. Answer. B. Regularly replace items, use sneeze guards, and monitor temperatures. Ensuring safe food handling during buffet service involves regularly replacing food items, using sneeze guards to protect food, and monitoring the temperatures of hot and cold items. Question 79. What are the procedures for safely reheating food for hot holding? A. Reheat quickly in a microwave to any temperature. B. Reheat to at least 165 degree Fahrenheit for 15 seconds within 2 hours. C. Reheating is not recommended for hot holding. D. Leave at room temperature until warm. Answer. B. Reheat to at least 165 degree Fahrenheit for 15 seconds within 2 hours. Food being reheated for hot holding should be heated to 165 degree Fahrenheit for 15 seconds within 2 hours to ensure it's safe to eat. Question 80. How should a manager integrate new food safety technologies into their operation? A. Avoid new technologies to maintain traditional practices. B. Gradually introduce and train staff on new technologies. C. Immediately replace all old practices with new technologies. D. Use technology only for record keeping. Answer. B. Gradually introduce and train staff on new technologies. Integrating new food safety technologies should be a gradual process, with proper training for staff to ensure they are used effectively and enhance food safety practices. 